Before we begin today, I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters for their additional support of the channel. And uh, hopefully someday soon their contributions will help me uh, improve the video quality here. So I just want to say thank you very much. And let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Mega Build Project. We are back at Coastal Cottage instead of Dalton Farm this time because after the last episode I went ahead and looked at it and it went into critical mass mode. It was almost done so I just kept building fences and adding stuff. So today what we're going to do uh, at request, a lot of people wanted to see this, I'm, I, so we're going to do it. Um, we're going to decorate this provisioner thing. Now down here you can see I've got some stuff already on the shelves. Those are manually placed and I put them there early so that when I save and come back, save and come back, I can test to see if they fall through the shelves. And it turns out those metal shelves are actually pretty good about holding stuff. So we're going to do that. Now, the first thing I want to do, since I'm using OCD, I have to find a good spot here at Coastal Cottage to be able to sink things. That's what I'm doing with the pillar there, because if I'm going to take shelves and furniture out to put OCD things on the shelves. I need a place where I can, you know, raise it, lower it wherever I want. And uh, in here, uh, one of the parts of the final decorating run is that a lot of times what I will do is I will put placeholders in to remind me what the thing is. Like here it's the, the terminal and the chair and stuff. That tells me later on when I look at it, okay, this is, you know, the, the administrative area for the provisioner. Okay. But when I come back to decorate it, I'm like, okay, this is pretty bare. So I'm going to need other stuff. So I put the bookshelves in and I put the the wall shelf in. I like using wall shelves to spice up areas because they're easy to put up. Uh, OCD stuff sticks to them very, very well. And you can move them around very, very easily to get them out of the way in case you need to, um, in case you need to put something below them because what happens is, you know, uh, it'll go up on top. So what you do is you move the shelf, put stuff on it, put the shelf back. So here I'm trying to fill in the gap and I'm like, okay, a couple of filing cabinets would be good. There's a lot of filing cabinets in Mac or fish packing. We could have stolen those. And we're going to use the group select thing to slide them in close because their physics are their bounding box is very very strange now here's a tip thing you'll see me do a lot the the little bucket wouldn't go that one way so i turned it around and it did a lot of objects in this game have inconsistent or illogical bounding boxes so a lot of times what you can do is you can uh, is you just turn things and they'll work where they otherwise wouldn't same thing here with this bucket the bucket is is bigger on one side than the other so we're going to decorate this thing here today. Uh, I did think about doing this in real time, but it was just too long. And it's just, there's so much fiddling in menus that double speed is just the way to go. And now I'm trying to find a flat ish spot where I can put this up. Cause what I, what I do, what you're seeing me do here is I keep picking it up, right? And looking at the bottom, when I group selected, I lift it up and I'm like, okay, what level is it at? You know, what, uh, how, which is higher? Like right here. Okay. So the, the filing cabinet is a little bit lower than the object I'm placing, so it should not be a problem. But what'll happen sometimes is if the object that you're group selecting, not the anchor, but the thing you're picking up, if it's too low, you won't be able to place it or it'll do very, very strange things. But here we get, we were able to wedge two filing cabinets in there where I didn't want to rug drop them or nothing like that. So now we start decorating. When it comes to decorating, there's a couple of, um, I guess, I don't know what you call it. I don't even know concepts, I guess, is that um, when I go, when I'm out through the Commonwealth and I'm running around in the Commonwealth and I go through an office building or I go through a house or I go through a store or whatever, I'm constantly sort of subconsciously looking at what kind of junk is in there. You know, what kind of stuff people in the Commonwealth use or would have in those areas so that when I go to decorate a similar type of area, I've already got a sort of idea of what types of things will be there. Now, the only problem with this is when I decorate, most of my stuff tends to come out looking the same, right? Because I mean, an office building is an office building. A desk is a desk. It's that's what you do. So what I do here is put a nice, some nice clipboards and put this little note thing on there. So it looks like they're writing on something. That's the one thing I don't like about clipboards. There's nothing on them and there's no clipboards with like paper on them. So you kind of have to do this, but do this. A couple of clipboards, a couple of pencils, done. Very, very simple. Uh, I don't know why I pick pencils all the time. I mean, you, I should use pens, but I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like the ink would have dried out in a pen that's 200 years old. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So that's one concept I do is that I, I constantly look for in-world scenes, you know, 
especially with raider camps and stuff. I mean, raiders are just basically chems and cigarettes and, you know, empty beer bottles and stuff. But occasionally they do have other stuff. And here we, have, we see my, the, the normal thing I talked about before, which is threes. You know, three of one thing, three of another, three of another. You will see threes come up a lot in this. That is just something that by now I do kind of instinctively is put three things down. Sometimes two, but mostly three. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on here. This is actually the third uh, attempt at this video. I apologize for the lateness. I try to put these up on Friday, but uh, yesterday I, uh, I did one. I, try, I tried using OBS to record instead of the Elgato software. And I tried like six different thousand settings. I could not figure out. It doesn't come out as sharp. You know, the, the OBS does not come out as sharp. So, um, okay, before I continue that story, what you just saw there is something I do a lot with OCD in particular. Okay. Since OCD will drag from any workbench that's attached to the settlement you're working in, and I don't like getting attacked, what I'll do is I'll put all my stuff in a remote workbench. Right. In this case, it's at Red Rocket. And then OCD, when I place things with OCD, right, it takes it out of that workbench. Now, but what happens is in OCD, when you scrap something, right, you place something that OCD recognizes, you scrap it. It doesn't scrap the item. It just returns the item to the workbench. But in this case, it puts it in the workbench here. So when I need something that I want to manually place, like these folders, I'll just build them on the ground, scrap them, go grab them out of the workbench, and then put them here. It's easy to do, right? Because the workbench here is mostly empty because everything is in Red Rocket. So that may be something that you might want to do, uh, might want to keep in mind as a handy tip for not having to carry around all the stuff in your inventory or drag through it all the time. You can save a lot of time by letting OCD do the heavy lifting and you're just grabbing another workbench. Now here with the folders, I'm just dropping them every which way. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I know in the sound they clatter a lot because they couldn't, in this particular case, they couldn't figure out where to stop rustling around. They did eventually. But, you know, a, a good combination of manual placing, OCD placing, and uh, judicious furnishing goes a long way. So that's another one of the concepts that I wanted to do here. And, of course, I'm dropping stuff because my, uh, my depth perception is not great. I mean, it would be so nice if there was, like, if there were, like, when you pick something up manually, there's like a dot on the ground that showed you where it was, so you could just put it right in there. But this is fine. This will work. It doesn't take too very much longer. And uh, one nice thing about using mods and modded containers like these little buckets here is that when they're placed in the world, they're, they're hard objects. So I know these folders are pretty much not going to move around or fall through the world because even if they do, they're going to fall on the they're going to fall on the um, file cabinet, so they're not going to go anywhere. And sometimes I do uh, use the game to manually place things like that because it's faster. You know, it's faster than digging through 300 items in a menu, especially with purified water because purified water is at the very end of the OCD drinks thing. And I use purified water a lot. So I, it's just a lot of the times just easier to stick it on there. So we got the shelf and here in the shelf, uh, when, I, when it comes to working areas, I basically stay on the household and personal effects tab and just pick like four random items, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, Random stuff is the key. A lot of the times what gives these things flavor, especially in a from a scrappy perspective, since scrappy is pretty much all I build, is settlers, uh, they, when they're in my settlements, when they're, you know, living in these settlements, they are enjoying a level of, quote, wealth. They're enjoying a level of wealth and, and, and whatever that they've never had. So they don't know what to do with it. They're like lottery winners that, <laughs> that don't know what to do with money. So they're going to scatter stuff all over the place and just do random stuff like that. So doing that, adding random stuff to uh, an otherwise organized scene gives it a lot of character, gives it more character than it would otherwise. Something else I do a very great deal, especially with shelves, is I will use boxes, crates, you know, and, and buckets and whatever to have big objects to fill the space. Because otherwise, you, you're sitting there placing like 30 items of clutter, right? If I put three or four boxes here, I can, I can cut that amount of, of stuff in half and just not even worry about it. And this is a perfect example of all the things that I do in terms of filling up a space, is that I use, I use the group select to put big objects on the shelves to uh, fill up the space. And then I put use OCD for most of it 
And then when I get done with it, when I'm getting tired of working with it, no CD and I don't really care, especially on stuff on top shelves. Top shelves, bottom shelves is kind of a hard because it's hard to get a good angle on it, but top shelves are easy because they're at eye level. So at the end here, you'll see that I'll do the boxes and I'll put some OCD stuff on here and then I'll put the, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the bookcase back and then just randomly put four things that are in my inventory. That's another thing I do a lot in terms of um, trying to randomize it, trying to get it to look pretty, is that whenever I grab things, like here, this camera, this camera is gonna come up a lot, okay? I couldn't get it on the shelves with OCD, right? I built it, I think I built it, did I build it? I built it and scrapped it. But anyway, what I try to do is use everything that I've taken out at any given point to decorate with. So since my workbench is empty at this point, right? Over time, over the course of decorating an entire settlement, I will have changed my mind probably 15, 20 times. I will play something, didn't like it, scrapped it, and it goes in the workbench. So then when I get to the end of my uh, decorating phase, like I'm satisfied with everything that's in there, I go back in the workbench, take everything out that I scrapped, and I just put it wherever. That adds a nice flavor of randomness to it where you don't really want to be too organized. I, I think I talked about this in the decorations video, but you, a lot of times what, what tells the story is the items themselves. You know, you don't need to come up with a narrative for a settler. You can just put down a bunch of crap and the narrative will, will tell itself. So for instance, here we're in the provisioner thing, right? We're in the provisioner bay. This is the provisioner's, um, the provisioner's temporary storage shelf, I guess their working shelf. So I'm just going to add a bunch of random stuff here. I, it doesn't even matter what goes on here. It doesn't have to be all filing and clipboards and pencils and calculators and typewriters. It can be, you know, whatever. It's just random stuff because that gives the sense, I guess, in hindsight, that they're just taking whatever they can find and sticking on the shelf for later. I'm going to put it up there for later. Now, I don't like the way these things clip into the shelves. I, I wish they did not clip into the shelves, but they do. A lot of stuff does that. The magnifying glass does that. Cigar boxes do that. Screwdrivers, uh, the combination wrench does that. So a lot of those things, you sometimes have to place them manually because otherwise they look kind of weird just sitting there. Uh, I have figured out a dodge for the screwdrivers. I just put any other wrench down and stick the screwdriver on top of it. And since it sinks a little, it actually looks pretty good that way. And I can't get this thing to work. So we're just gonna call that bad, a bad idea. No, we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep plugging away at it. I wanna stack it too, but you know what? One is fine. But yeah, here you go. You, you can see the threes, right? On the bottom shelf, telephone, magnifying glass, typewriter. On the next shelf, rat poison, clothes iron, two cigarettes, a cigar, and a brush. Two times three is six. I, I don't know. It's just, that's what looks right, you know, I, I guess. So yeah, that's that's the concepts behind this sort of thing. The, the key, I guess, if, you, if I could just have you take away one thing from this is just, is to not worry too much about getting it perfect. I know there's that good enough thing again, right? But it's it's true. I mean, they're settlers. They don't have an organizational system. You know, anything that they have of value is going to be on them, right? Or put away. They're not going to want anybody just, you know, wandering around grabbing their stuff. So the stuff that's on the shelves, the stuff that's sticking out is stuff they either have not processed yet or they don't care about. And in this case, this works out pretty good. So, okay, we've done four shelves, right? We placed what, 12 items? Yeah, we placed 12 things and the shelves are full. In the past, I would have sit here, I would sit here with this thing and I would have put, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 things, but it takes so long and you really don't need, a lot of the times less really is more, you know? So we've got a little space on the top, need to break up, need to break up that visual line so it doesn't look so empty. It doesn't make sense that it would be this empty with this much stuff in the provisioner thing, right? We gotta put some, something up there. So we're gonna give them a box and a vase, and then we'll stick a uh, little vase for a uh, for little visual uh, little visual variety. And that box does not want to go up there. And then of course a radio, because I don't know. I just it seems like the settlers would like radios. You know, they want to know what's going on in the Commonwealth. They want to know the news, even though they can't go anywhere. So there we go. There's our shelves. Now we got uh, now we have an empty shelf to fill, and we're looking around, going, okay, what does this need? And that's another thing too. At the end of a set, like I've got a, an area almost done, I'll say, okay, what does it need? So I'll look around and I look what's missing, right? Now here's that camera again. I want to put that camera on the shelf. 
I have not yet realized it's too big. So we're gonna do three clipboards, a camera, some money, and one more thing, because we need three. We need threes, right? It's all about the threes, man. Okay, an empty vase, sure, why not? And I'm looking for another thing to put on there, and I'm like, you know what? Nah, we're fine. Okay, we'll do seven. We'll do seven, because in the back of my head, I know that that camera's not gonna fit, so it's gonna be six anyway, right? So okay, let's go back to uh, let's go back to here. Turn the light on, drop stuff on the floor. Another thing to keep in mind when decorating is tight spaces are very difficult to deal with. Many times you'll need to move your furniture from where it is to outside to get it um, to get it to work right to be able to work on it without going blind or you know figuring stuff out. And uh, how am I going into build mode? Oh, I'm standing things up. So you know that trick, right? When you drop stuff on the ground, go into build mode, tap it, it writes itself, and then you can just pick it up a little bit better. A lot of times too, I will crouch. Oh, there's one right there. I will crouch, so it's at eye level when I pick it up. Makes it a lot easier to get close to it, and uh, I find that being closer to the object gives you better depth perception. See, I didn't do it, I should have crouched. There you go. Crouch, get close, pick it up. So that's how I decorate. That's how it works. It's going up and got six objects on the shelf. Now here's another dodge. When you've got a, a shelf that you don't think is quite full, but you have enough stuff on there to fill it up, just spread things out. Just take the stuff you've got on there and move it around. Say, hey, look at this thing, rotating it, trying to get it in there. It's like, yeah, no, it's just too big, dude. It's not gonna fit, just, it's not gonna fit. Just put it back in the workshop or just pick it back up. Don't even put it back in the workshop. Yeah, it's not gonna go. Bounding box is too big for that tiny top shelf, man. Not gonna work. Hell with it. So now I've got a gap, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just slide stuff over. Move that over here, move that over here. Um, a little tip on Scrapper 2, when you flag things, of course, they glow. But those objects will not glow if they replace with OCD. So when you do your tours, don't forget to go to your workbench, take everything out, unflag all the stuff you've marked so it doesn't glow. I, I forget that sometimes and it looks dumb. So we've got the office done. Now we're gonna go out to do the provisioner uh, delivery deck. And of course I reach for the barrels first because those things are, we are close to Far Harbor so I've got it on the brain, but that just takes up too much space. That's not gonna work. I'm like, do I wanna put this there? Yeah, I could, but I'm not gonna bother with it. Let's just put some boxes out. I really love these wood boxes. The wood boxes, the wood crates, the plastic crates, the little cardboard boxes. Those things are awesome for decorating, especially if you can place them in the engine because of course they're hard objects. They'll stay put. And you know, you don't want to be too regular. You put things off a little bit, just a little bit off kilter, a little bit twisted, a little bit, you know, not centered, not straight, not even. And that adds a little more character to it that you get a little character for free, you know. But they got a stack of boxes here. We'll stick a cardboard box down there, put a couple of crates on the floor for other stuff. We'll put some stuff in those later. But even this late in the game, I'm, I'm adding my stuff up. But anyway, I tried the first video with OBS and I could not get the settings to work. So I had to delete it. And then I made another video. So I had decorated the doctor's office first and that one came out blurry and I didn't like it. So then I went, okay. So I decorated the guard's office with some different settings and it corrupted my, I mean, for some reason it corrupted the video. So this is the third attempt at doing this. So the guards right now, the guard's offices are decorated. The doctor's office is decorated because I turned that the building with the chem station into a doctor's office because it just it made sense. Doctors always have chem stations. And now I'm thinking, okay, I, I need to fill that gap between the two sets of boxes. I'm going to grab this table. And uh, okay, so I'm not going to bother with this very much. I'm just going to fill this up with boxes. I'm like, hey, I like this little box. Let me find a place for that. A lot of flitting around in decorating mode too. A lot of going back and forth as things occur to me or I get new ideas or whatever. So this box is gonna have the small valuables on it. So we're gonna put a tool chest on it, we're gonna put some ammo on it, we're gonna put some, uh, we're gonna put some uh, stim pack boxes on it. And then we're going to just drop some random crap on top to fill it up. Um, another tip for decorating and making things look, quote, making things look sort of real, you know, making it look convincing, is to put things on the floor, okay? It doesn't have to be a ton of stuff. I'm guilty of this a lot. Um, but if you look at this shelf, right, this is a shelf. It's like they're using it for storage, okay? So they're gonna have stuff on the floor. They're gonna be putting stuff under the shelves. But the thing is when you put stuff, when you put the shelf down, right, OCD won't work underneath it. 
if you put the stuff on the floor first, sometimes, a lot of times, the shelf will not go on top of it. So uh, it's always a good idea. It never hurts to, when you've placed your shelf or table or, you know, whatever the thing is, and this goes for bottom shelves as well, take a little extra, take about 30 seconds, take a couple things out of your inventory, drop them on the ground, and just throw them underneath there. They don't have to be straight. They don't have to make sense. There just has to be something on the floor so it doesn't look so empty. So it looks haphazard and scrappy and not um, organized, not completely put together like they were in a hurry to get, you know, to defend the farm or, or whatever, get back to work. But see right here, I've got six containers, two threes, and it fills this shelf up almost perfectly. So I want to put some stuff here on the bottom shelf, and I realized that since I've got ammo boxes here and I've got a lot of missile turrets, I'm going to need some missiles. So we're going to put some missiles down here. Are we going to do it? Yeah, we're going to do some missiles. Drag it in, put it up. Now the missiles, unfortunately, do not stack, and they do tend to sink a little bit into the shelves. So this is where, again, the combination of OCD placement and manual placement makes it look more convincing than it might otherwise. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second when the shelf goes in. So, okay, the shelf goes in. We don't need to do any fancy group selecting because it will fit. We'll just take it. We'll slide it in this empty gap and put it there. Now we've got some crates and boxes on there. Let's go grab those missiles. Boop, boop. And we'll go stick them on the shelves. Again, floor drop. Now, be careful floor dropping a lot of stuff in tight spaces. That's going to come up here in a minute. I remember that because... <laughs> Uh, there are certain objects I do, like uh, shovels and hose and stuff, and they just go flying around everywhere. You get the same thing when you when you ground drop, uh, like uh, super mutants, they're boards or pool cues. If you've dropped like three or four of those at once, you'll see that they just go flying everywhere, man. I don't know why they do that, but you got to be really careful about dropping things in tight spaces. Drop things, you know, two or three at a time. And out here, of course, clipboard and pencil because it's the inventory place. Sure, they're gonna have a clipboard. And what else? We gotta fill these boxes. What are you gonna put in these boxes? Eh, we'll put some water in here. Now we go all the way to the end. I, I really do wish OCD had separate categories for alcohol beverages, Nuka-Cola beverages, and then bottles, empty bottles, and miscellaneous. Because I mean, scrolling through 60 items to get to this thing, I'd rather just drop down two menus and go, but whatever. So, put some purified water in here since they're probably producing more. Purified water is something that I put in almost every build because, I mean, that's... The Diamond City Guards brag about it. We got purified water. It's like, yeah, I got purified water too. I got lots of it. So here I'm reading the side of the boxes and the boxes hold 762. So we're going to put 762 in the top. It doesn't make any difference, but it satisfies my, my need for... <laughs> my need for consistency. Since it says 762, it's like, well, they're 762. Now we're going to dress these up with some extra chems that couldn't fit in the box. And we're going to put, what, two med X and a stim pack, which is three. Again, three, three, and three. Because three just, it makes it look right. I don't know. So yeah, a combination of uh, ground drop and OCD and whatever. So now these boxes look kind of naked. So let's just put some random stuff down. Let's stick a barrel. Let's stick a bucket there. Now that I got the bucket out, let me stick a bucket over here too. Why not? Maybe they're using the bucket to wash off. Maybe they're putting water in the bucket to wash off stuff that's coming in. That looks dumb up there. Let's put it down here. There we go. That makes sense. And since they're washing things off, well, what are they going to need to wash things off? They're going to need uh, a dish rag or a napkin. But first, we're going to try our mystery. Oh, look at that. Fit in the box. Again, you saw it wouldn't fit in the box right away, but you spin it. And sometimes there will be a way where it will drop in. So I'm looking for my dish rag. I can't remember where it is. There it is. It's in kitchenware. So put that. And of course, not one dish rag, but two, because we need two dish rags in a bucket to make three. And now we're looking at it. It's almost done. What is it missing? Well, I need to put something in those barrels. Okay, because the barrels are there for a reason. But what reason is that they're holding stuff? What are they holding? I'm like, ah, uh, trying to think of an item that's tall enough that I can stick in there. Right? I'm like, wait a minute. I'll just build them and stick them in there manually. Let's do that. Since the barrels will stay put, let's do, oh, hose. Yeah, I like hose. Ha ha, I like hose. The hoe, however, unlike the brooms and the shovels, has a very, very strange bounding box. It's like in the center, but it's sort of off to the side and it's really huge. Now you see, I just dropped two brooms, but there was only one here, right? Because there was no room for it and it fell down under here. This is why this is where you, you know, when you drop things, just drop 
one thing at a time, especially when they're big like this. But we're just gonna start putting brooms and hoes and shovels in these in these barrels because they'll stick up and look pretty cool. I did this way long time ago in Taffington, in the uh, the mega in the Taffington mega build, and of course, if you can get it mostly in the barrel before you drop it. Dropping it helps though. A lot of times when you, I'm sure you've noticed this when you place things, right? When you place things on the shelf and it's and it's sitting on the shelf when you drop it, it'll vibrate. It'll kind of shimmy a little bit. Um. And what happens is if you leave it like that and come back, sometimes it'll shake itself off the shelf and blow things all over the place. Like, uh, like when you when you touch a car and it vibrates and kills you, it's the same sort of phenomenon. I think what you can do to avoid this is always drop it from a slight height, let it land on the surface on its own. The game figures it out a lot better that way, and it's much less it's much less likely to shimmy. We're gonna stick some shovels in here, and of course I forget my own instructions. Of course I learned that right here, is that you, can't, you gotta be really careful about putting stuff down on the ground. But we're gonna drop some stuff here, and again, there are two brooms and a shovel in one barrel, and there are going to be two shovels and a broom in the other barrel for three. So yeah, three. <laughs> but that's all there is to decorating. I mean, we're getting we're getting close to being the end. now. Now I've got three things in my thing. I'm like, okay, I got stuff in my inventory. I need to put it somewhere. Let's just drop it on the floor. The camera, we'll just stick it on the shelf. We'll stick it on the floor in the bottom down there to make sure it's doing its thing. I'm looking in here to make sure there's nothing else I need to add in here. And I'm like, do I need to add anything else in here? No. Do I need to put a rug down? Uh, probably not. Let's just drop these hose down here and we'll just jam them in. Ah, they'll fit over here. That's good enough. Maybe they fell out of the boxes, the sellers didn't care, or whatever. And I gotta say, too, uh, something else I learned from uh, having all these dogs wandering around and having a bunch of freestanding stuff on shelves, the junkyard dogs you get out of the cages, they don't seem to knock things off shelves. I've had them running around inside houses, they've been brushing up against shelves, and for whatever reason, they are very good about not knocking things off shelves. So that's one thing maybe you don't have to worry about. And are we done? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, so here we go. Here is 40-ish minutes of decorating. It takes about, so you, when you look at settlements, when you look at my, my stuff here, and you look at a decorated area, you can assume that it took about 45 minutes to an hour to do every area, depending on its complexity, depending on how much stuff there is, depending on how many shelves and flat surfaces there are. But this looks pretty reasonable for a provisioner thing you know they've got some supplies a bunch of random stuff kind of stacked up haphazardly they've got some stuff sitting out because they haven't worked on it yet there's no room in the bin or they haven't gotten rid of it they've got their little record keeping stuff they've got barrels for the long stuff and that's pretty much all we've got for this one i hope you enjoyed this and i hope this is what you were looking for i want to thank you all very much for subscribing and watching and i will see you in the next one take care